Welcome back onto the Health Hour on Nandidi TV. Today we have Dr. Mayuk with us. We will be talking to you about diabetes. How much do you know about diabetes? Probably you might know it's a sugar problem. You might know people have, it, have wounds that never heal. But do you know how it is like to live with diabetes? Today we are here to have a discussion which will benefit all of us. So stay in with us. Doctor, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, very good day. We will talk about diabetes. It is not a structured interview. Why is it important? Because diabetes is a problem which runs for many, many decades. And before you develop diabetes, there is a possibility that you can slow the process. You can even change it. That means you prevent being a diabetic. Mm -hmm. What I tell my patients that diabetes is a silent killer. But if you could control the disease process, you will have exactly a healthy lifestyle like a non-diabetic person. Right. So there's a great hope. There's a big research going on everywhere. How we can make complication less from diabetes, how we can live better. So I frame that into three concepts. Mm -hmm. One, I say you grow well. That means if you have a child with diabetes, you grow well. Be as near normal as human being okay. possible. Then we say if you're in the middle life of your, if you develop diabetes, I say live well. You live well with your diabetes. And if you develop in the later part of the life when you're old, then my slogan for that is edge well with your diabetes. Okay. So we all have a hope, but we need to know what it is how to prevent it, how to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So what is diabetes? Right, so diabetes, what I tell people commonly, is a process where body cannot handle your sugar. Hmm. So we need to know how we sugar, I get it in my body, how I can utilize the sugar better, and what helps that sugar to be processed well. So imagine you have a glass of water and there is nothing in it and you have a glass of water, there's a lot of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So when the blood has a lot of sugar, the blood is basically getting a bit sticky. Yeah. It's something like a honey and water. So in your body, there's a special gland called pancreas and they release a particular hormone which helps your sugar to break down. Okay. That's called insulin. Mm. So we born with it. Is there any process where you can have less insulin? Yes. Because sometimes body's own cell attack their own cells. So one cell has attacked the insulin producing cells. Mm -hmm. Then you become no insulin, a man or a woman without an insulin. That is we normally call type 1 diabetes. Okay. Then we found a group of people where you may have insulin in your body, but there is a lot of resistance. So insulin cannot work. Okay, it's, it's there, but it's not working correct. properly. It's something like you have a house. There's a lock and you lost the keys. So you can't, you get, can't in. get in. So we can work on that situation to give you a lock. Lock is there, the keys that fits into that lock. So that means we give you some medicine mm -hmm. so that when you go in, you can spend time in your room. So those group of diabetic then use some medicine to unlock the insulin resistance they have. That means they have a little insulin which they unlocked it and it works better for them. Okay. In the same scenario, there is another group where with time, somehow body demands more insulin. Here I tell my patients to remember two things, that you have a debit card and a credit card. Mm -hmm. That means you use your debit card when you need a bit more, you use your credit card. But that's not a good idea. Better not to use your credit card at all. So if you are focusing on your lifestyle, where your demand is more for insulin, you could reduce it. Okay. Then that will work better. So these two last I discussed, which is called type two. Okay. You have excess insulin doesn't work, or your demand is too much, which you know sometimes you see what we call maturity onset. That means you're eating too much sugar food, you're not using too much sugar, so they go back to the blood. 
Okay. I think that addresses some of your question. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So now we move on to some of the questions that we have from our viewers. Good. So we've got um, Bridget from Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, Bridget used to be my classmate. So okay. yeah, I know Bridget very well. Um, what she wants to know is why some people take pills and others take insulin. And what would happen if I miss a pill or an insulin? Right. So how you deliver insulin in the body, it depends on a particular situation. Right. Person who has no insulin or amount of insulin body needs, you don't have enough, you have to give them the insulin. Mm -hmm. And I gave you that concept of a room and lock and keys. Sometimes we use pills. They work in your body to prevent not using your own insulin. Okay. So that means that medicine or that pill helps you to unlock the room where the insulin will be effective. Okay. Now there are many ways of addressing this question. Let me go back to the diabetes a little bit that it will help. What are the different types of pill are there? If you go back to your food, it coming into your gut and the sugar comes up, then sugar from the gut goes to the liver. Mm -hmm. So you can use some pills to stop getting your sugar too quickly to the liver. Okay. And then liver processing it and liver throws some bit into the blood. So you can use some pills to block that route. Okay. Then that particular blood flows through your kidney and the, some of the sugar comes out in your urine or pee pee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can block that area where body will throw a lot of water and sugar and not allowing the same sugar from the kidney going back, back to the blood. The blood. Okay. So individual cases we have to find out where type of pill you are using it. And does this depend whether you are type 1 or 2 diabetic? Usually correct but the type 1 by default means you don't have any insulin. So you okay. need to give external insulin. Right. But so the, they are those that mainly stays on insulin? They have to stay because they don't have it. Okay. But the type 2 can be as I said categorized into those groups where body is not handling their own insulin very well mm -hmm. or demand is too much that you need an extra. Right. So sometimes that scenario will come if you don't look after yourself well mm -hmm. at some point you do need extra insulin. So to sum up, basically it's a delicate balance. Reduce your demand, happy with your own supply of insulin, or at some point you need to prejudge that, okay, I don't have enough. For example, you need 10 units of insulin. Body can give you six units, so you need mm -hmm. another four units to match it to up. To match it up, okay. Or what you can do is you allow the body to work in such a way that body never needs more than six, or body might need five. So basically you need to be measuring your blood sugar levels as to how many That's correct. insulin you should The way inject. we set up the program, we assess where in that journey patient is. Mm -hmm. It is a very lengthy journey. Okay. It doesn't stop overnight. Because you, before you became diabetic, you became pre-diabetic for a stage. Yeah. Now if you go back to this, lots of research studies have shown the people probably lose 50% of their body function before they become clinical diabetes. That means diabetes with symptoms. Mm -hmm. So that means silently you have come so far along the road without any help that you definitely need that need addressing. Okay. So today conversation, I think I will highlight that we need to identify those chunk of patients who are pre-diabetic, what we call it. That means you're not showing that the body cannot handle, but you are on a kind so of... So that means you're not demonstrating any symptoms yet? Correct. Okay. And it is something like, I, I always like the traffic light of life, which is you are in the amber zone. Mm -hmm. So if you do things correctly, you might go back to the green zone. Okay. So in, in our UK, we have got a values. What we say is something like between 42 to 47, if you have a measurement which is called glycosylated hemoglobin which is a measurement gives you over three months period okay 
So if you cross 48, that is a cutoff point and that became diabetic. 42 to 47 means pre-diabetic and anybody below that side, 0 to 41, normal. Okay. So here question comes that how you can address not to be diabetic when you're pre-diabetic mm -hmm. and not even pre-diabetic, you stay as a normal person, person with no problem. But unfortunately, there are genetic informations. If it is in your system, There's bit nothing, from your mom, bit from will, your dad. It will, it will at some point Correct. At some out. point, you may be onto that route. But here, my slogan for them is, you don't die from diabetes. You live with, okay? You die with diabetes. That means you control in such a way that you have as healthy life as possible. Mm. Okay. So there is that element what you just asked me about insulin or pills or whatever. You need that kind of assistance. Okay. So that you stop having complication from the diabetic, which is a disease process. Hmm. We will come to com the complication yep. bits. Um, I think there was a second part of the question that says like, what happens if I miss a pill or I miss my insulin? Right. So essentially what you are allowing that your sugar level to stay high. So that means instead of a you can see the water in a glass very clear as you make a bit more sugar mm -hmm. when it is for too long period it stays sugar they block the channels for right. your vital parts of the body for example brain the kidneys the liver the eyes and then you begin to develop complications so it is better not to be in that state so if you miss one tablet, for example, it's not a serious problem. You can always take it more in the evening or less in the morning. It okay. doesn't matter. Sometimes okay. you can regulate yourself because it's sometimes a demand and supply. Mm -hmm. So one missing pill is no harm. But definitely okay. if you intentionally don't take it, you are making yourself much more vulnerable yeah. to have. It's like winter cold. You know, when it is very cold, you need preferably you need a jacket and yeah. when you don't need it, don't wear it. Okay. So insulin is a different argument, but definitely tablets or pills. The argument is if body doesn't need it, don't take don't it. Don't take That's it. Fine. Okay. If body needs it, please take it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's move on. We've got another question from Emma from London. He said, um, I'm pregnant with my first child and I've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I want to know if this can be cured. Does this increase my chances of having type 2 diabetes? Right. This is a very interesting question and it has to be sometimes person specific. As I said to you, gestational diabetes is some special condition. Okay. Where you can see the baby and the baby in the both demanding more insulin. Okay. Baby and mother. Yes. Okay. To grow. And if we don't give mother the right treatment, then you end up having complication from the diabetes mm -hmm. that will affect the baby. Yeah. Right. There is no straight cut answer for this. Gestational diabetes is a condition as you pregnancy being delivered and the baby is successful, you come back to normal level because your high demand now has come back to the normal demand. Mm -hmm. But that particular process give us an indication that if you follow them up, the natural history suggests at some point, the body will demand more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So you may be diabetic at some stage of your life. Okay, which is this type 2? That's right. So this is important to identify why did he develop, how to cure during the pregnancy time, and then trying to make that person as normal as possible post-pregnancy. So the, during the pregnancy, the gestational diabetes is curable? It is. Okay. I will not say curable, I will say manageable. Manageable. You need to manage it because here is not a, something that you are curing, okay. you are controlling it. Right. You're making that person aware that, hello, your body cannot handle sugar very good. Mm -hmm. So the same overloading sugar going to the baby and making baby ill. So try to control it so well that you have a healthy, balanced outcome. Right. Okay, good. So let's move on to the next one. This is from Sal Sally from Excess. Mm -hmm. Can eating too much starchy food worsen my diabetes? Answer is yes and answer also no. Why I say that? Because starchy food is essentially a type of carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. The fundamental problem is 
body cannot handle the sugar you are throwing into the gut. Now starchy food actually takes a long time to break down into small chain sugar molecule. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have a glass of orange juice, within 30 minutes sugar goes up. So quick. But if you have got an apple, it takes a little bit longer time. But if you take yum, it takes a very long time. Very long. Mm -hmm. But you are still taking sugar. You are taking sugar which takes time to, break, to down, break down, but it will still elevate your sugar level. Okay. So there you are doing the right choice that the body is not getting immediate sugar. And by the time sugar goes into your blood, you can use your muscle to eat up some of the sugar. Right. So it's a very gentle process going on. But essentially you need to think the portion control should be the great idea for you. That how much can I take, even if it is a slow process, mm -hmm. I don't want to subject my body into high sugar load. Okay. So non-eating is not an option. Sugar which breaks down first is not an option. Starchy food is an option, but the portion has to be addressed. Did you say sugar is not an option? No, which is the fine sugar, what I'm talking okay. about, which is a short chain sugar. Mm -hmm. All right. For example, too much sugar cane. What I tell people to remember this way, natural sugar is good for your health. For okay. example, which you get it from starchy food, mm -hmm. broccoli and Brussels sprouts, for example. Okay. Man-made sugar is essential killer. Biscuit, cake, mm. cane sugar, coke, fast food with lots of sugar. They are not healthy for your body. So if you make a right choice, you should, your choice should be long chain sugar, which will take awful long time in the body to break down so mm -hmm. the muscle can eat away some of it. Okay. So if you could maintain the dynamics, but there again, portion control is very, very important, very, very key. Great. So what are some of the complications of diabetes? Right. So if I, if I take you back to the original thing first, if the body cannot handle the sugar you are throwing into the gut, the two ways body could handle. Either it goes through the liver, kidneys and come out through your pee, mm -hmm. or body begin to clog up the fine channels. So wherever there's a fine channels, if you don't get enough energy and enough fuel, they will malfunction. Okay. So for example, if you start from head down, you have a higher chance of having stroke. Come back to the eyes, very fine channel, very, very fine channel. They get clogged up. You don't see anything. You become blind. Mm -hmm. Then you come down to the heart. Same thing. The, the muscle, heart muscle cry for a lot of oxygen, but there's fine channels that not enough oxygen to flow through. You get silent heart attack. Okay. Come back to the liver. Liver become mishandling the amount of fat into your body as well, because that's another problem we see when you have a, people who have a difficulty handling their own sugar mm -hmm. in the body, they get too much fatty liver. You come down, look into the kidney. Kidney, then the, that disease process gradually clog up the circulation around the kidney, then kidney begin to malfunction. So kidney is like a little filter. Yeah. So all the waste is getting collected in your body and giving you problem. Then you come down a little bit, the circulation in the leg, if the main channels are getting slowly, slowly blocked, circulation get compromised. Mm -hmm. And our body every day going through a repair and injury process. You break, you repair. But diabetic then begin to slow down that process. So you begin to develop ulcer here and there, infection here and there. And remember, I always tell my patients that Skin is the largest organ of the body, but we sometimes don't look after them well. Yeah. <laughs> and the diabetes has a great influence on them. So people do see some hair loss and repeated skin infections and lots of other things, dry skin, etc. So Why does it take so long for diabetic people to heal as well? Uh, the, the answer lies in my previous conversation that you imagine you're hitting in the house. Mm -hmm. There's a lots of channels. If your channel is blocked, you don't get enough heat. Yeah. So if your main channels in the body for some reason is blocked and you developed an ulcer further down the road, you're not sending any supply material to heal to tissue heal. better. Mm. Although you're taking it, it is not reaching there. Okay. 
So the process is blocked. The, the best way to, to describe you, for example, you are traveling in UK, you have a motorway, you have got A road, you have got a B road. Now, if there's a serious accident in A road or motorway, B road will be clogged up. Mm -hmm. So if the diabetes begin to affect your main channels, where the heart sending some blood supply, a lot of nutrients, unfortunately, they are staying in the circulation, but not reaching there. Right, yeah. So therefore, your vital organs, which is skin, they don't heal well. And you, you start from the process on top of the skin, right down to the bone. There's quite a lot of complications, you know, with diabetes. It's not just the sugar in your blood. It's affecting the whole... That's right. Bean. Yes. So we, I think we need to look after ourselves more. Mm. Um, let's move on to the next one. I've got a question from D Danny. Mm. He says, does having diabetes means I can never take sugar or any sugary food? I think we've, we've um, touched on that. And how much... But just, to, just to tell Danny one thing, that yeah. this is a myth. You can take sugar or mm. sugary food. Portion control is very, very important. Right. Because I tell my patient there are lots of good websites to guide you there. We call low carb program, etc. Mm -hmm. Diabetic.co.uk is a wonderful website. So you can go into there. What kind of sugar you should take, how long, how far, and how much amount. So that's not the right way of putting this. Okay. And I've got another interesting question here from Francis from New Zealand. He says, my child used to be bullied at school, at his formal school, for using insulin. His peers will tell him he uses drugs as he keeps injecting stuff into his body. My concern is for more awareness to be created in schools to prevent such bad experience. Yes, I'm sorry to hear that, but I think that should not be the case at all mm. because... First of all, he's not using any drug. Exactly. He is using a medicine to keep him alive. Because probably from your story, it looks the child might be type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't use the insulin, he will have a very, very serious life-threatening situation. I think here, school, the parents, the which the young people also take some responsibility not to make miscomment like this. This is this is a kind of, I will take it a little bit further. It's like a bullying type of situation mm -hmm. rather than the real, addressing the real problem. Yeah. This is a lack of awareness among the fellow student, friends, as well as probably the teacher. And here I think I personally will take a responsibility to go and make them aware that this is not a drug, this is a life-saving material. material yeah. Somebody needs to have been. So there is no point of demonizing him yeah. because of your ignorance. And I tell my colleagues in this case that we jointly should do something to make more aware. The boys should help each other in case he feels unwell. Mm -hmm. So we need to educate them what hypo sugar means, what hyper sugar means, and why we all have to work together for a bit a situation which is not created by him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there may be some process going on in his body that his own cells are targeting the cell which produce insulin. So we have to give him insulin from outside source. Right. So once that knowledge is there, I don't think he should go through any process and that, that will be helpful for everybody. Mm, I think that's, that's the main concern of, of this parent. Like there should be that awareness because obviously children will always be children. That's right. They don't know whatever, it, all they know is when someone injects Taking something is, is drug. Yes. Yeah. So th 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 that's what, that's what I, I, that's what we need to take some ownership here mm -hmm. and we need to go through that knowledge process. Okay. The best way to address is having an art competition. Identifying yeah. people what food to eat, what food give you the high sugar in your body and how to control. So a bit of, uh, I should say, wellness education okay. will help them rather than uh, demonizing them. That's great. Let's take um, our last question and then we take a break. Um, I've got Adam yep. saying, what are the dangers of diabetes and driving? Yes, so th this is... Um, very much specific country by country. Mm -hmm. There are clear guidelines in DVLA, Driving License 
authorities. Mm -hmm. Any drug you take which reduces your sugar to the level that you could be so unwell, which we normally call hypoglycemia. I tell my patients to remember, when your sugar level drops down to four, you are on the floor. Mm -hmm. So imagine you are a driver, your sugar level drop. You don't really know where you are driving. Yeah. Or imagine that somebody coming in front of you whose sugar is two, he cannot visualize you are in the front of him. And that leads to disastrous consequences. So does that mean diabetes can make you lose your sight? Not only sight. Completely go blind. Yes, but that is in the long term. In a short term, if your sugar falls, your brain goes into kind of fog situation. Okay. And you cannot process your information. You cannot judge your distance. You get an extreme weakness in your hand, so you cannot hold the steering wheel. So it's not just the eyes. Suffering. Correct. It it's the to whole body. The brain, the whole body. Yeah. This is um, we call hypoglycemic symptoms, where mm. the sugar level has dropped to the critical point that body start malfunctioning. It's okay. like you're driving the car, your headlight not working, mm -hmm. your engine is uh, flapping, you don't have enough petrol, your brake doesn't work, your clutch doesn't work. So same thing. Yeah. Your brain doesn't work, your eye doesn't work, your heart doesn't work. Your hand doesn't work, your muscle doesn't work. So you can understand it's a mm. combination of a cascade of process. Yeah. So it is important that in that hypoglycemic situation, you should stop driving. Make sure that your sugar come back to the level which is functional. Okay. I, here I, I always say, if you are five, you can drive. Okay. It's a very easy way to remember. Mm -hmm. Give yourself at least 45 minutes to an hour because sugar can rebound and fall back again. Take your starchy food. When you feel again, have a little break mm -hmm. and then drive again. So that means you have to be much more safe right. and you have to be aware of hypoglycemic symptoms. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, how are you able to spot that I'm going into hypo now, That's so right. I need to stop? So there are two categories of symptoms we get. People mm -hmm. sometimes aware. First, it can go into your heart, so you begin to feel palpitation, what we call high fast rate, you see sweating, mm -hmm. you feel that I'm getting much more weaker, and then another symptom is what we call neuroglycopenic, that means the brain is not getting the sugar now, mm -hmm. so then that leads to kind of confusion, tremor, etc. So there is a combination of two symptoms okay. you come. It all depends how many years you are diabetic, how much insulin you take, Predominantly, this is more common on insulin because insulin sometimes works differently than the tablets. Okay. There are some category of tablets which does create these symptoms because they go and kick the gland which produce insulin. So you get a bit more insulin than normal. Mm. So the bottom line is if you have excess insulin, not enough sugar to match it up, you go lows. If you have less insulin, too much sugar, you go hyper. Okay. So in both situations, driving could be very serious, but the hypoglycemia is a killer. And can you be stopped from driving completely if you are? No, uh, there is a form. Hmm. I think there are two categories of driver. One is a, a car, your, your private hire, etc. Another is a heavy yeah. vehicle. Okay. There's a very clear guideline. Everybody should notify DVLA. And that form gives you a special signing authority and information from your GPs. As long as you control your hypoglycemia better, mm -hmm. you understand, you have the material in your car which will prevent hypoglycemia, Okay. then you can drive. I get Okay. We're just going to take a quick break and we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associate was established. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation, and so on, up to date, has been broken, and that is why our client base continues to expand. 
We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law locally in London and across the borders in Ghana where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203-1300-751. Hello, welcome back viewers. Thanks for staying with us. So now we, um, if you've just joined us, we're talking about diabetes and how to stay healthy, how to look after yourself if you're diabetic. So um, at this point, Doc, we're going to be talking about how we can yep. prevent it from happening, mm -hmm. having a healthy lifestyle, which is going to you know, help us live with the diabetes and also to prevent it from happening in the first place if we can. Mm. So um, what, what, what are some of the things that we can do to help us you know, live with diabetes? Right. So here the situation is that I'm diabetic. Mm -hmm. I have a diagnosis. Now I have to deal with it. If you deal with it well, you live well. If you don't deal with it well, then there is a problem coming. So I tell my patients, remember ABCD of life. Mm -hmm. You must assess where you in the journey you are. Because it's a long journey for you. You will be living many more years with the diabetes. There's no way out. So mm -hmm. keep assessing your condition. That means yeah. go for a regular checkup, talk to your doctors, have a routine blood test once a year or every three monthly, depending on where you are in that journey. Yeah. Some people may need to take measurement every day because of taking insulin. Some people do it every three months. Some people need to do every six months. So keep assessing the situation, mm -hmm. okay? It's a very dynamic situation. And you can, you can begin to see that you are in the steering wheel and you are driving it well. Car is there, steering is there, but you have to drive. So you're driving your journey through the process, uh, uh, diabetes. Then B, I say, B for behavior change. You must change your behavior. Mm. Why I say that? Because the question is the fundamentals are there. If you give your body too much sugar, body will either handle it well or mishandle it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So let's change the behavior. Let's understand the psychology. Why am I giving too much sugar to my body when my body cannot handle, cannot handle it? Yeah. There's no magic solution here. All you have to do is a behavior change. change yeah. So for down. example, cut it down. Instead of having frank sugar in the tea and coffee and a soft beverage, cut it down. Go back to the plain water. Mm -hmm. Look for an opportunity to have natural sugar. For example, have a green apple rather than a biscuit or a cake. So change your behavior is very, very important, right? And then you, you see, see means you, when you continue your journey for a long, long time, you sometimes need to do a bit of counting carbs. Right. How much am I taking? Should I take that much? Have I got enough insulin to balance it out? Mm -hmm. So once you have done that counting carb, that because the carbohydrate is the main problem here, isn't it? Yeah. Which you normally call sugar. So the C's also stands for carbohydrate. That means once you begin to count, it's something like I tell my patients, you have a little money, why to go and do a splash around in a big shopping center and then you end up in debt. Mm -hmm. So if you begin to count your carb going into your body, automatically you will handle it better, you will have less complication, you will have less requirement for insulin and etc. And thereby you will have a very healthy lifestyle. But how are you able to count? If you are not really, let's say, if you are not educated, if you don't know how much quantity of food contains, how much carbohydrate in there. Yes. How yes, are you able to you do that? Sometimes you need help from a dietitian. Mm -hmm. There are lots of books. There are lots of apps. There are lots of websites if you are very digitally minded. Yeah. Like diabetes.co.uk has a wonderful uh, insight. You can go into that. American Diabetic Association has a beautiful patient information leaflet, they categorize morning how much you should take, lunchtime how what you should take, and evening what you should take, right? Mm -hmm. So this is very individualistic approach. There is yeah. no magic things. And the biggest carb is a spoon, carb okay. count. You can think that I can take four spoon and I feel really awful. Mm -hmm. I can take two spoon and I feel good. Okay. 
So that, that needs a little bit of, um, I should say, communication between the practitioner and, and the and patient, patient or the who has a diabetes, right? And then D stands for three Ds of life. One is you look into your diet. Mm -hmm. Second D, improve daily activities. Why I say that? Because the, your muscles in your legs and hands, and which is building your skeleton, they take away the sugar from the blood. So even if you take a little bit more, encourage your muscle to take it away from the blood, which is a natural process. Right. And the third D is the drugs, where you discussed before insulin, pills, etc. to modulate how we can handle sugar. Yeah. So in summary, if you focus on this A, B, C, D, you have a wonderful life. And you can look into this book picture we talked about, and we are coming back into that. Yeah. Lose weight, that means your demand is more. You are having too much sugar in the body. So again, it come back to the diet and amount you are throwing in the body, where body sometimes store it as a fat or, because you normally don't store our energy in the process of carb. Mm -hmm. When you throw the carb, they go back to fat. Okay, I just want to know another thing, like looking at exercise, for instance, I just want to know how exercise is able to help with diabetes. Yes, there are lots of research available, what we have seen, mm -hmm. that uh, first of all, exercise regulates your blood flow very better. The, the muscle, they take away lots of sugar from your blood, utilized it, mm -hmm. burn it as a fuel, and then come out of the circulation through your kidneys as a waste product. Mm -hmm. So that means your body begin to burn the excess sugar in your system. Right. So that's why sugar in the blood cannot make the blood more syrupy. It is more like a thin, good flow. Okay. So if you are not big too much syrupy uh, kind of situation, your blood flow better. And then automatically you get the two benefits. One is circulation going very well. Yeah, you're looking after your heart. Correct. And all the other organs. And the second thing is what you are doing. You are burning the excess by muscle using it as their powerhouse. Okay. So all the fuel you have thrown into the system mm -hmm. has been used to generate energy. And that energy in turn making you much more healthier and you feel brighter and you feel good inside. So exercise, exercise, exercise. The important thing for handling the sugar well. Okay. And then in terms of diet as well, you know, instead of spending time seeing a dietitian, when you're not diabetic, what are some of the diets that you can have to make sure you don't end up being diabetic? And then if you are diabetic, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you can do to help yourself in terms of diet? Diet is a big term. What I normally tell patients that choose a plate smaller than what you're choosing. Mm -hmm. To start with that. Okay. If you think I fancy four spoon of rice, make it three spoon. So essentially what I'm coming back to the concept of portion control. Because sometimes eating is a habit. And that eating habit can be bad habit. Yeah. So if you begin to understand that, no, this is too much for me. This portion is too much for me. I cannot handle it or my body cannot handle it. Then automatically you make the first move. Yeah. Then you think, what am I eating? Have I got a balanced food in my plate, right? So not just 80% of my diet is carbohydrate. I can have a balanced meal, mm -hmm. carbohydrate, fat, and protein, okay? And also essential vitamin, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look into the picture there, have a look into the portion into the carbohydrate sources. If you think that is a bit too much, you can replace half of it with that other side of the picture where you have lots of nuts and greens. Mm -hmm. And the bottom of this portion. So what also, you say is the source of iron. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And also bottom of the pictures, you have got a bit of fish and an egg and a chicken. Yeah. So if somebody decided to have 90% of their food only carbs, mm -hmm rather than 40% carb and then 20% protein and then a little bit of these pulses and also have a little bit of glass of milk. Right. 
That's the kind of diet you are looking for. And it is, I, I always tell my patient, please don't punish you. You can also choose because there are so many different items available. I have looked into some websites, 3,000 different recipes available for diabetic people. Mm -hmm. So we are not telling you starve. We are telling you choose, choose the, the right, right food. Yeah. item and controlling the portion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's come to our behavior as well. I know we, we've touched on that. You have people staying at home, eating <coughs> as much as they can, not exercising, bringing their trouble to the hospital. I wasn't going to say their trouble, but in actual fact, you're not helping yourself in any way. You know, some people are just self-neglecting. Yes, I use a term for them called deliberate self-harm. Hmm. If you have decided to harm yourself, nothing I can do. I can only encourage to do not to do it because you have yeah. a full capacity in your mind. Because I don't want to go to a process where it leads to confrontation rather than partnership. Right. Partnership is a very, very useful term in life. I think here we need to try to motivate him, try to give him some insight and mm -hmm. try to identify why he's resisting it. Yeah. I don't want to demonize him that he's not doing it. Maybe there is, a, there is an element where he can't do it. So does it mean that his mind is slightly arrested? He's not thinking properly? Mm -hmm. So that kind of assessment is necessary because, you know, this, this, we have seen there's a huge correlation between diabetes and depression. Mm -hmm. So maybe we are blaming him that he's not doing it, he's doing it, but actually he can't do it. So Just we need to unravel that process, help him addressing two beasts together. Mm -hmm. And then separate them, put them in a cage, then he come out as a nice man or a woman. Okay. So it is important to identify why somebody cannot do it. Because it's all very easy to say, choose five different types of food. Some people simply cannot afford that. Mm. Because the cheap food means too much carb foods, starchy yeah. food. Yeah. Once you go into these expensive options, it may not be physically possible, financially impossible, impossible. task. Yeah. So the, we have to sometimes sit down together and working in partnership and thinking, for example, a big portion of chowing or noodles. Instead, you can have noodle soup. So you're actually controlling your portion. You're satisfying your satiety and your appetite as well. At the same time, you are living healthy. Mm. So it is important to make that balance in life. It's all very easy to say, you do it, you do it. Physically, sometimes it's not possible to do it. So in that case, I tell them, is there any possibility you can grow your own vegetables? You may have a possibility there. Yeah, you have or, a big garden. <laughs> or small garden or in a tub and make sure you can buy the cheap lettuce rather than very expensive beans mm. if it right. is not possible for you. Sometimes in this country, frozen portion sometimes help. Tinned fruit can help. So replace your bread and butter into a bit of butter and, for example, baked beans, mm -hmm. few portion. Okay, mushroom. If you go in the wild, you pick up some little mushroom and have it with them. So there are options available, but working in partnership is ideal. Okay, talking about frozen food and tinned food, would you say that fresh? Fresh ones are more better than having having the, the tin ones and the frozen ones in terms it, of nutritional it depends, values. Yes, in the nutritional values means uh, some of the frozen food lacks certain antioxidant fresh. Okay, fresh yeah. is always a good option, but okay. living in Britain is not uh, always possible that you can get yeah. it from your garden tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay, majority flown <laughs> in. We we import a lot of fresh fruits, okay, okay. and vegetables, etc. It's again, striking a balance. If you could afford this, fine, because fresh vegetables are very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. But it is better to have something than nothing. Yeah. If you cannot afford fresh beans, it is okay. You can have a tin beans, and, or you can have a bean soup, for example. But not having it, not an option. And I think we should not compare between fresh and non-fresh. As long as your portion has got enough 
vegetable meat and carb that's mm. a delicate very nice meal fresh options are always a good option but it may not be physically or financially possible is diabetes treatable or is just manageable it depends what stage journey you are if you are just diabetic for one year and you are overweight and we know the major factor in your life is the food or the diet mm-hmm. it is preventable okay. we can come down losing weight using your muscle more mm-hmm. and follow that abcd of life you might see you become pre diabetic and then you normalize yourself and okay. there i think i have seen a lot of really religious fasting does help because you are actually controlling the intake you're controlling less sugar coming to your body and your organ begin function well right. but if you are you have already come too far away mm-hmm. in that case it may not be preventable and probably you would have ended up with other conditions as well along the line and sometimes in uh, it influence each other mm-hmm. like if your other gland doesn't function well yeah. and gland has not power of secreting insulin mm-hmm. in that case i think it's a full paradise that you will be preventing it mm. what you can do then grow well live well and age well with your diabetes okay and lastly can diabetes kill you it's a very difficult question to answer because the diabetes does not have a direct killing power okay. but it works through the different organs major organ is i said to you the diabetes is a disease of your blood channels what we call microvascular change it means your blood channels get narrower and narrower and narrower because they alter the body's dynamics how body handle their energy so it can cause a heart attack it can cause your kidney to fail mm-hmm. you can give you an early condition a uh, sort of stroke those are, or you can cause serious problem in blood flow into the vital organs so thereby it facilitate the process of life come to an end but we don't think that anymore because we have options not to stop the light mm. your journey should continue and we are there and the health tower is there to give you a guidance we direct people and we try to lift our lead so that we don't develop unconscious incompetencies in life mm. Thank you so much Dirk. Thank you. So listeners and viewers, you've heard it all. You live healthy, stay healthy, you age healthy. If you are out there and you think you can eat anything that you want at home and still stay healthy, you are doing a big mistake. Look after yourself, eat well, watch your weight, exercise, read, be happy, and you keep on staying healthy and you stay away from diabetes. Most of the images that we had today we had them from Diabetes UK and some of them are from the American Association of Diabetics so you can go on the site you can read about it you can read more about it you can inbox us um your questions as well if you have any further questions if your thoughts and ideas were not shared on on the program today you are more than welcome so keep watching the health hour on Andy D TV see you next time